At the Soviet Conference on Physics in 1927, Maria Curie is the only woman in attendance. But nowadays, only one-fifth of PhD degrees in physics are awarded to women in this country. So why, in this day and age, haven't we achieved gender balance? And why men are still out outnumber women? Uh, women are underrepresented in many areas of mathematics, science, engineering, and technologies. So to all, all these questions, what's the root cause? The root cause is never a difference in intelligence, in gender bias. To solve this, to trust, to solve this problem, the, I think the initiative to promote the balance should come from the women working in the STEM field themselves. As a woman have been spent so many years working in the STEM field, I think I already learned how to, despite bias, earn a degree and find a job. I think lots of girls in this world, in this university, and even in this very room have suffered the same issue. I am definitely not the only one. In 2012, Malala Yousafzai, a Pakistani girl, was shot for going to school. She right now is a Nobel Peace Prize winner, lauded for her bravery continuing a fight she began at age 11. Her bravery tells the world that no one can take away the rights for a girl to be educated. There are 61 million of children who are out of school right now, and most of them are female. For me, I have a similar situation when I was young. Uh, my friend, sorry, my parents are doctors, and we were lived in a city. Just right before I was about to attend the first grade, they are dispatched to a small village as a medical assistant. That village is really far from cities, so they don't really care about education or going to school. For me, the only chance to go into school is to work miles on a mountain trail and go to school there. This may think, you may think this is absurd, but this is actually what happened at that time. So to seize this only opportunity, I choose to be educated. I did meet some girls who choose not to go into school. And one said their parents told her, you are a girl. You don't need to be knowledgeable. The only mission for you in this world is to get a man, get married, and have kids. For me, I have to say to that is, women are not procreation tools. They are the wisdom of this world, and they deserve the equal treatment with men. Uh, for me, I am lucky because my parents believe in science, and they encouraged me to go to school and get a good, great education. So in 2007, I was able to attend an amazing university majoring in physics. So uh, in the first year, there are a quarter of students in my class are female. This is pretty high ratio at that time. But at the second year, lots of girls choose to change their major because they felt the pressure from their parents or the society at large to persuade them to get girl-type job, like they can have a career which is suitable for women. I must admit that this had a very large impact on me because I start to panic. I start to worry, is there actually no future for women working in STEM? Or am I on the right track? But for me, I'm really loving in working in the lab. So I'm, I love new thoughts. I love putting my new thoughts into new productions. And this is my interest, and I feel happy about it. If, yes, maybe my life will be easier if I choose to change, but I won't be happy. So that's the moment after I think this through, I decide I will stay in this major. Uh, before I knew it, I was about to graduate from my physics degree. Um, in order to get better education, so I choose to come here and get a PhD degree. Because English is my second language, so I need to, in order to pass GRE or TOEFL, like that test, I need to spend more hours on memorizing English words. After seeing me working extensive hours on study, some of my relatives said to me, stop, you won't get an offer. You already work enough hard work to get your bachelor degree, why bother to get a PhD? Just get married and get your life going. I sank their concern, but I didn't listen to them. So, for, because for me, I think the getting my life going is not to find a perfect man, it's to stay with your passion and working in the area you're actually in love with. Eventually, I found out I got six offers from 
United States with full scholarship. After I entered bachelor to PhD program in FSU, I thought everything should be better, that I may have a friendlier working environment, but actually no. One day, I was in a manufacturing lab, and I was trying to undo a screw. The screw was tied in very tight for a better seal, so I needed to spend all my strength working on it. Just at, the at this time, one guy walked by and asked me, why do you choose engineering at the first place? You don't even have the strength to do that. Just quit or get another major. Wow, that's the first time I ever heard obstacles can be, sorry. That's the first time I ever heard weak arms can be obstacles on your way to pursuing your PhD degree. <laughs> so if you think strength is the thing you may need to know to have pursuing a PhD degree in engineering, then you can use your strengths. I will use my brain. <laughs> Thank you. So this is definitely not a one-time occurrence. I have to learn how to deal with this unfair judgment while I'm still pursuing my PhD degree. All the hard work I did at that time is trying to prove myself. In 20 13, a chance arose. I got a, a flyer from Zonta International Organization about Amelia Earhart Fellowship. Uh, this is a fellowship they will select 35 people around the globe to encourage women to pursue advanced studies in aerospace area. And this fellowship is meant to encourage those who will be extraordinary in the male-dominated field. So I start to think, what's the odds? 35 people out of millions. Why they choose me? So this is definitely a chance everybody wants, but this is definitely not a chance everybody can get. Later, I talked to my advisor, Dr. Okono Okoli, and my best friend and colleague, Dr. Tarek Dickens. Both of them told me, just go for it, never hesitate. It's never hard to put in your application. After my hard work and I put in an application, I find out I act actually got the fellowship, and which led me to more interviews and my face appearance in the newspapers and FSU homepage. After I got the award, I also got to know lots of successful women in the Zonta International Organization, and I even got congratulation emails on LinkedIn from other districts who saw the news. I start to talk to them. Then I found out I have more and more advice from them. That's the moment I start to believe that all of my hard work actually worth it. So later in the same year, uh, I worked with several of my colleagues, Margaret, Chelsea, Emily, Deborah, and Rebecca, who suffer from the same gender issue in my lab. We started an organization called Dream On. Uh, at the beginning, we volunteered in preliminary and high schools to help the little girls about basic science, teach them about the science projects, try to encourage those girls who show interest in STEM and to continue their path and never stop chasing their, their dream. After a while, we start to realize that little girls may have interest in science, but what actually stops them is the judgment they got from their parents, friends, during they grow up. So we start to recruit more and more female in FSU. We held gender body meetings for them and try to involve them in the same network. We provide the chance for them to support each other and while they can have more confidence in their daily work. After two years, the head of the association, Margaret Shiner, got the same Amelia Earhart Fellowship. It is really great to see that all the women in this campus has has to put the effort to have all the people realize about the gender bias. And never say that you are a girl, you don't deserve this. I think you are a girl because you are a girl, you need to take that chance. Uh, last April, I graduated with my PhD degree in industrial engineering. And I start to work as a product development engineer for a company called General Capacitor. After all I've been through, even though I'm the only female engineer in that company, I still think I can handle all this with my confidence. In hindsight, I should apply for 
the Amelia Earhart Fellowship with no hesitation because after I got the award, I already got a lot of things far beyond my imagination. It this January, the former president of Songte International in Tallahassee, Ms. Suni Remaker, gave Dr. Sham my contact information. That's how Dr. Sham got to know me and gave me the invitation to speak at this amazing TED Talk. I think this opportunity is precious. Even though I don't know how to speak at this public, I don't have experience to speak like this, I still want to break my limit, and here I am. That's why... <laughs> Thank you. That's why when Dr. Shem called me, I said yes immediately. So human potential is like water in the sponge. If you, in order to get your water, you need to squeeze sponge. So never say that you don't have a chance. The only thing you do is to put in your effort. Women are underrepresented in this world and in many areas of science, technology, mathematics, and Sorry. <laughs> Women are underrepresented in many areas in this world, in many areas of science, technology, mathematics, and engineering. So this is a great area with no easy answer. Uh, because it is likely impossible to entangle the effects of social bias and individual preference, because the individual preference mean, will come from their understanding uh, in the difference of gender. So as a member of a group which is considered vulnerable by this society, I think we need to grab that chance when it's available. So, so never say that you don't have the chance. Ch the chance is fleeting and only you can, can do what you can do. This choice will not be made by the world, by the society, but will be made by you, and only you know what can lift you up, and only you can decide which path you will go. So before I leave the stage, I must leave you with this. Girls, grab any chance you can get to chase your dream. Never let your chance fleet in front of you. This world will leave you no, no time to hesitate. Get active and get crazy. And boys, never mess with a crazy woman. And good luck. <laughs>